everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today I have 10 ideas for you that are going to take your playing up a level and have you sounding much better. So yes, the title does say 10 ways to instantly improve your playing. Just want to say, of course, in music, it's a lifelong journey. Um, but these are 10 relatively simple tweaks that you can make that will just... Okay, let's start. Number one, check your posture. You want to be standing in a comfortable and ergonomic way when you're playing the recorder. Now, your perfect posture might look different to mine because we have different bodies, but there are a few things. I like to check that my weight is distributed evenly, that I'm not leaning on one foot or the other, and that my shoulders are dropped. <laughs> So I find standing firmly, confidently, playing out and proud, uh, it makes this immediate positive difference to my sound. Number two, you can try raising your recorder a little bit. If I hold my recorder too vertically, then I feel my fingers gripping and tensing on the instrument, trying to keep it in my hands. Whereas I lift it up a bit, the weight is transferred to my thumbs and it's more comfortable to hold. This better balance enables my fingers to move more easily. You can try it just by playing a long note. Again, everyone will be different and have a different preference, but for students whose fingers are struggling because you're gripping into the recorder, this has been something that's really helped. Number three, warm up before you play. I mean, and your recorder and yourself. If you warm up the top part of the head joint before you play, you'll notice less condensation in your recorder, which means less frustration. And taking a few minutes to calm down, play some long notes, a couple of finger and tongue exercises. I always sound a bit rusty when I start practicing, so I do a few warm up exercises. That means when I get to my actual music, I'm sounding much better, that's like a confidence boost. Number four, and it's an important one, your airstream is one continuous stream, not starting and stopping for every note. If you start and stop for every note, that's what gives you that school recorder sound. Your air is one supported stream, interrupted by the tongue. It's like singing la 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 instead of this is something that if it's new to you will take time to practice and get into your system but just having this understanding for me that was a real light bulb moment. Five, check where your tongue is tonguing. So we articulate the start of every note with do, 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 do. But where is your tongue going? It should not be on your recorder. That sounds like. It should not be on your teeth. The tip of your tongue should be articulating on that gummy ridge behind your teeth. Ha Hello, gummy ridge. Da, 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 da. The more precise you make that movement, the more clean your articulation will sound. Six, listen to the ends of your notes. When we're practicing a piece of music, we're so concerned with the start of the note. What note is it? What's the rhythm? How loud should I play it? And we forget about the end of the note. Taking some time to practice your piece, concentrating on the ends can really clear everything up. By this I mean sustaining your sound right to the end of the phrase. So instead of we get for long and short notes you're ending that note when you want it to end not when your brain goes on holiday and you move on to something different <laughs> number seven vary your articulation you can play every note the same 
But if you make a bit of variation, longer notes, shorter notes, even a simple tune can sound a lot more professional. How do you know what to do? I like to sing it through in my head or actually sing it before I play. Da, 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 and then try and match what I'm singing to my tongue. Number eight, make sure your fingers are moving together. With the recorder, because of the way it is, you have all these glorious cross fingerings and often you're moving and alternating multiple fingers at the same time. If your fingers don't move together as a team, you'll get blips. It's quite hard to do because I've spent so much time practicing not to do this. If you're hearing these blips and you don't know why, it's probably because your fingers aren't moving in unison. So take those two notes and go really slowly. Make sure you know which fingers are moving and see if you can identify the problem finger. It's a bit of a nerdy process, but I assure you it's one that's gonna clean up your technique like wow. Number nine, before you start playing a piece, take some time to think of the tempo and the rhythm before you start. If you just jump into a piece straight away, you're spending the first few bars figuring out how fast it's going, what the rhythm is, blah, that's confusing. I really take my time to sing at least a few bars in my head and feel the pulse. That makes my playing sound so much more relaxed. And number 10, please clean your recorder. If you have a plastic recorder, you should absolutely do this regularly, every few weeks even. With warm soapy water, just wash your plastic recorder. If you've never done this, you will be horrified at the gunk that comes out. Leave it to dry afterwards and it will sound a lot better. With wooden recorders, the process is more complicated, but giving it a proper clean and oiling session can make it sound much better. I've done a full video on that over here um, because I know it's quite a daunting concept, but this can be something that can really help old and tired recorders. And I've got a bonus one for you, number 11. Accept that mistakes and not sounding perfect are a necessary welcome fact of life when it comes to music. There's not a destination with music ever. There's not an end point. There's not a point where you play perfectly and that's it, you've reached it. Some days you sound good, some days you sound worse and actually making mistakes is vital for the learning process. If you never made mistakes, you never learn anything and you're probably not taking risks. For me, seeing mistakes as a welcome part of the learning process that actually helps me really helped my confidence and helped me to make much more progress than before when I was trying not to make them. Now I've said all these points, I can think of a million others, but I think this is enough to be practicing for now. If you have any tips that have magically tweaked your playing and helped you, please share them in the comments below. Let's wrap that up there, shall we? As always, you can, what do I say here? You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Over here is the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel and up here is another video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!